The Matildas have pulled off a stunning upset ahead of this year's FIFA World Cup on home soil, ending England's 30-match unbeaten run with a 2-0 win. But the win did come at a cost with Tamika Yalab, Courtney Vine and Sam Kerr all limping out of the contest. For more on this, let's bring in the head of women's football at Football Australia, former Matilda herself, Sarah Walsh. Sarah, how big was this win against England? Yeah, it was pretty big. I think um, I think everyone that woke up this morning either watched it or, or woke up to see the results. Um, really understand the magnitude of um, uh, this, the significance of this win, and, and in the context of the Women's World Cup. Um, if you didn't know, England and were on a 30-match uh, unbeaten streak, and in my view, uh, they're the world number four at the moment. But they are the most informed team, and a lot of people talking about them as the the team to beat at the Women's World Cup. So for the Matildas to turn around off, off the back of the Scotland result and come away with a 2-0 win, win. And I think it was a really comprehensive performance defensively, which which gives the team a lot of confidence and also the fans um, leading into July 14, which is the send-off match prior to the Women's World Cup. And, and on that match, that, that final match, I believe it's, uh, it's another heavyweight in, in football against France. Yeah, and it's um, look. I think one thing that we've we've been doing over the last three years is setting up a, a really great on pitch strategy with the Matildas. Uh, we did some research back in 2020 to realise that we weren't playing enough uh, highly ranked opposition more often, and we weren't playing enough European nations. And we we've turned that around the past three years and really thought strategically about um, you know each of these international windows that we've we've had, whether it be playing away or playing home, and. Um, you know, we, we feel quite strongly about, you know, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. And um, they did just that. And I think it was it was more around in the fashion that they did it, um, which really excites me. Obviously, Sam Kerr uh, with her, her textbook ball over the top and beautiful mm. finish. I mean, she wasn't going to disappoint in the country that she plays her club football and uh, she turned up for a country today. Yeah, indeed. She's done it again. And I can tell you in my household with a couple of budding Matildas at home, there's a lot of excitement about the World Cup. Is that something which is shared more broadly right now? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, um, I mean, I live and breathe it. I wake up every day thinking about the World Cup. And over the past three years since we won the rights to host back in 2020, we've, we've been thinking about how we leverage it through a, a strategic plan called Legacy 23. And we've been able to really... Um, secure federal government investment and, and state investment to be able to um, really deliver more the memories of this event. So we've been working hard on that. But I think the penny's starting to drop here. What people don't realise is that uh, the, the size of this event is going to liken to, to what we experienced in 2000 Olympics. 60,000 unique, visit, uh, unique visitors, 2 billion viewers globally. 2 mm. billion, I'll just let that sit. This is the biggest women's sporting event. Uh, not far behind the uh, being the biggest sporting event in the world behind the men's World Cup, and we're expecting 1.5 uh, attendees. But uh, excitingly, yesterday the last phase of ticketing went on for Matilda's matches, and um, I'm hearing by early reports that um, the entire allocation for Matilda's tickets were exhausted in minutes. Wow, that's it's going to be huge, and and so from the tourism perspective, from putting Australia back on on the, the I guess the radar for for travellers right around the world, it's huge given that audience. The other thing uh, we also proud of the Socceroos absolutely at the recent Men's World Cup, but a bit more hope and, and optimism I think around the Matildas that they can give this a red hot crack. Yeah, it's it's really challenging in world football. I I, I don't want to really you know. Um, but there's 211 countries. That's more than than out of UN countries, and it's um, it's a really competitive market. Asia is getting getting a lot better. And for for what the, the Socceroos did back in November, I mean, we see how these two national teams, when they play, it really just it captures the broader sporting fan and beyond that now. And I think that. Uh, what we got to see with the fan sites uh, late last year, which you know, there's there's nothing that unites a nation like the Socceroos. Um, what is that going to look like on home soil for the Matildas? And um, we've done so much work off the pitch with the Matildas. They've actually just surpassed the Wallabies in terms of brand awareness here in Australia. And I'll, I'll just let that sink in. A women's uh, national team has just surpassed the, the men's Wallabies team beyond brand awareness. And so for us, it's very important that they're delivering you know, social change as well. 
Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're one of our, our greatest commercial assets at Football Australia, and we're hoping that we can actually start to trigger something here domestically for women's sport by hosting this event. Yeah, well, I mean, just finally, we talk about the brand awareness. What about the, what about the brand of some of the superstars? They're, they're huge, aren't they, as, as individuals? Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. And, I mean, uh, a lot of, I guess, how, households really know who Sam Kerr is. And uh, we actually, the, the official trailer for our docuseries with Disney went live today. You should check it out. It's a six-part series. Um, you're going to get a really great intimate access into this team. I mean, they're the most travelled Australian team. They they travel like you wouldn't believe. We had a player who had a child uh, during COVID while she was playing overseas. Um, her wife had a child and she didn't meet the child for seven months. You're going to start to see the sacrifice uh, through the lens of a, a Matilda and um, that goes live April 26th. So I, I really encourage you to, to get to see it. I think that the love for the team is going to you know, go beyond the, the current reach that we have right now. And um, they're, they're just yeah. such a joy to work with. Yeah, well, we're going to bring a lot of joy this year. Looking forward to it very much, uh, former Matilda and the head of women's football at Football Australia, Sarah Walsh. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, team.